John here guys and today we're talking about the Isshin UZ65 and this is the long awaited inclusion of many different new features for this series. It is the successor to the famous UR65 and the US UK65 which came after that. Yeah baby! <laughs> and you can see that right next to the Mobula 6, it is very similar in size. They're both using the Run Cam 3. Now you can tell that this one has the original lens and this one has the newer style lens, but they're both the same camera. But this one has the option of coming with TBS's Crossfire system installed. Um, it has a Crossfire uh, micro receiver in there, but you can see it installed right below this one uh s board now i do like how they've installed it you can reach the bind button if you need to but you generally don't need to with crossfire i don't really like how they haven't anchored this antenna i may actually switch that with a mini immortal t comes in the bag a full set of these um props so uh, since this is ex experimental prop i particularly like that it does give you some spares just in case one comes loose you get this, again, Ishin hard shell case. Inside you will find yourself, in addition to this little screwdriver prop remover, four 300 milliamp hour Ishin batteries. This one, the sticker's already sort of coming off. Let's fix that real quick. And then a 1S charger right there that plugs into USB. And of course, as always, your instructions. Ishin actually does a pretty good job with this stuff on the instructions. They're very clearly laid out, tells you exactly how to do everything, set your settings. If you happen to foolishly flash your board, um, it'll tell you how to get back on track. The other notable thing about this is that it actually is not using the built-in um, VTX. It has this little Ishin Nano VTX right there. Um, the UR65 was a really special 1S whoop that a lot of people are still flying today. A lot of people still find that it doesn't have quite the power of the newer things like the Mobula 6 or the Beta Meteor 65, but it has a superior amount of control. So how does its successor compare? I just want to note that there are a lot of people such as Local Decode, one of our Whoop experts, and he runs in the local Whoop races that happened before the lockdown, that UR65. So should he upgrade to this? Well, this is notably different for a few reasons. One, it has the very, very good um, Run Cam Nano 3 what is just like a little board with a lens on top. Now it has the newer, um, smaller lens, which I don't think is quite as good as the original, but the original supplier went kaput. Uh, notably, it also has an external VTX. This looks to be the Ishi Nano VTX. And this version of the Nano goes from 25 all the way up to 100 milliwatts. So you should be technically getting a much better video signal out of this model than even something like the Mobula 6, which has an onboard built-in video transmitter. And lastly, this thing has Crossfire built in. That's right. If you look on the bottom, you can see the Crossfire Nano receiver right there. And it has this Immortal L antenna on there. I kind of wish they would have used um, the Mini Immortal T from FPV Cycle, but you know, they really didn't do anything special to anchor this. So it's kind of floating free, but I guess this is so small, it's probably not going to be a big issue. Oh, and I almost forgot, this has these experimental HQ 35 millimeter props. That's right, 35 millimeter props. That puts it smack dab in the middle of a traditional style whoop, which is 31 millimeter props. And the larger brethren like the Mobula 7, which is 40 millimeter props right in the middle. And this kind of has a similar drivetrain to this. They're both 0802 size motors. This is the super high KV um, Mobula 6, 22,000 KV. This is basically the same motors that come on the lower KV normal version, which is 19,000. So this actually flies a lot different than how I expected it to. 
I expected this combination to give you more power, more thrust, more straight to the moon. And that's actually not what I found. I found that my Hyper KV Mobula actually has a little more pep in the step. When you jam on that throttle, you can really go up very quickly. But what the larger prop diameter gave on essentially the same size and KV motors is it gives you an additional amount of authority and control. I found myself able to manipulate very small gaps easier, even on my first few packs. And that's something that I didn't expect, but is very refreshing to find. Um, now, I do like that they give you an extra set of these experimental 35 millimeter props. And I also like that if you look at the footprint, it is essentially very close. They've kind of made the outside of these ducts go inwards to fit that larger size prop. So the external size is basically the same. So you could, should be able to comfortably run a 31 millimeter prop if you want to, or if you just want to change the whole frame, if you don't like these, um, these frames are like three bucks a piece to switch over to something like this. So, um, given that the price of these is basically equal, if you don't get the crossfire version, then, I'm kind of leaning towards go with this, like experiment on that size. If you like it, keep going with it. And if you don't, it's very inexpensive to switch over to this more traditional format. But I think while you're at it, go ahead and get the Crossfire. This is my first Crossfire Whoop experience. And I really can't tell if so much of that extra control is the prop if it's the Crossfire system, but I was able to do things so easily. I think if I had to go to a race that was more about control, I would definitely bring this. This is actually slightly more speed, so I might bring the Mobula 6 if it was about speed, but control-wise, this thing has so much power. Maybe the 19,000 kV version is a little more um, controllable, but I found that for tight gaps, I was having a little bit easier time with the much larger and heavier Tiny Hawk 2. And this gives you kind of that best of both worlds. It gives you the control and the super amount of authority. It doesn't have punch to where you're going to be flying into the ceiling too much. Although I'm guessing though with this larger size prop that the cruising speed has been accelerated. So you can really use this in a variety of places. Now one thing that's notable about a lot of whoops like this is that the SPI receiver built in, while it is very nice to keep your weight down, the range is abysmal. And the VTX range on these is not that great either. Of course, you can't get far enough on this built-in receiver to really notice the video range. This, having an external receiver that is cross-fire cable, having an external VTX that is clearer and goes to a higher, um, output power really allows you to go whooping um, farther than you ever have before. And of course, you've always had the capability of throwing on a crossfire receiver, but I just didn't really like the headache of having to try to figure out how to cram it in there. They've done all that for you. And for a few extra bucks more, um, if I was going to go whooping outdoors somewhere and get a little more range, this would absolutely be my number one choice. If I was going to do um, an empty building dive or something like that. It's not really my thing, but if I was going to, I absolutely would want the receiver connection control of the crossfire system on board. And I would absolutely want an external VTX to give me the best video reception possible. So way to go with this one, Ishin. Um, if you want some of those features, definitely get that. Uh, if you're on the Crossfire system already, I highly recommend trying yourself at least one Crossfire Whoop. I was the biggest holdout for that system, and I'm finding as I try more and more sizes, it's making that difference, that confidence that it gives you flying around without having to worry about losing control. A lot of times, um, things like the Mobulid, it actually has enough power to kind of go putting around outside. You're not gonna be breaking these speed records, but it does, but you know, you are constantly nervous about losing that receiver connection and this alleviates all of that. So great job, Ishin. This really isn't something 100% new other than the props, but they have really given you an assemblage of a lot of the various high um, quality components that you can put into a Whoop while keeping the price low. Yes, you've always had the ability to throw a $30 TBS Nano 
um, VTX on there, but I mean, geez, that's a little bit of overkill. This kind of allows you to do it on the cheap and you still get crossfire in the receiver system. Great job. Thanks guys. Yeah.